What's going on YouTube? Sunny here, and today we are going to be bringing you the uh, most recently revealed Japanese set, Eevee Heroes. This right here is a 69 card mini set that will more than likely be incorporated into either Evolving Skies, which is the next set after Chilling Rain, or maybe in its own set. We don't know where it's uh, falling in place, but you know, needless to say that uh, these are cards that we will see in an upcoming set at one point or another. So it's only 69 cards, which uh, they do primarily contain, you know, as the name entails, all the Evolutions, which not only get their own V card, but they also get their own V Max card as well. Let's see how they did. Are we going to get playable cards? Are we going to get mediocre cards? What are we going to get right here? So I'll kind of just go down and try to speedrun most of these, since, again, a lot of these aren't really that playable. You'll also notice as well, like well, Pinsir, for example, they do continue the single strike and rapid strike mechanic in the game. That's going to carry on over. So more support for them, which, uh, by the way, just to say Pinsir, it gets around resistance for any single strike Pokemon attacks. Big deal. It's not worth a bench spot. So we'll actually head over to the very first Evolution, which is Leafeon V. Which, the base one has a uh, nice little ability, Greening Cells, that lets you search your deck for a Grass Energy, attach it to one of your Pokemon, but then your turn ends, unfortunately. Now, the fact that it ends your turn, it does have a balance to it, and it's like not that playable in that regard, since it's only like one energy, whereas, you know, with Rillaboom, you take a turn to evolve it, and then you get two energy. And they go anywhere you like as well. So, in that case, Rillaboom still does have the better energy acceleration for the same cost of waiting a turn. But this is still nice for uh, the Pokemon itself. When we go to the VMAX in general, and we get an attack Grass Knot right here, 60 damage, and then another... Basically, it's 60 damage for each energy in the Pokemon's retreat cost, the active Pokemon's retreat cost. So, it's another one of those sort of decks, like the one Tangrowth card, for example... Melodic, just to name a couple. It's that same sort of attack, but I think this one does actually a lot more damage, where it's like 60 for each one. So again, another one of those decks that you can probably throw in, you know, Absols, Galarmine, so on and so forth. It's a cute concept, it really is. Like, it's definitely not, not the best concept around there, but it's decent, it's fine. And, you know, obviously this is a Fire Week Pokemon, but given what we have right now, fire is still very prevalent in the meta. But then again, it depends on when this card releases. If it's going to be more or less a post-rotation sort of thing, then it'll be fine. But even then, it's just okay. Not the best, not the worst. Alright, and then we're going to scroll on down. I'm basically just going to scroll through these until I see ones that actually stick out. Which, you know, like most sets, even the smaller ones, there's definitely a fair amount of just junk. But uh, we come to this Eldegoss right here that has a neat little ability, which I think is actually the same ability as uh, the Robombe that came out during the Sun and Moon era that lets you uh, once per turn search for two basic energy cards and put them in your hand. That's pretty good, actually. That's pretty good. It's going to depend on, like, you know, the deck, of course, that this can even go in. I would say that maybe you can put it in, like, say, like a Frost Moth deck, for example, but I don't think the uh, bench space quite works out for it. You could maybe even fit it in a Welder deck while it's still legal. There's possibilities for it. Maybe not the best possibilities, but possibilities nonetheless. All right, so now we'll scroll down over here to Flareon V, which actually has the single strike uh, rule box for it. It does have a VMAX, but... That's on another page. I don't know why they uh, split them up like that on this site right here. Where uh, the basic attack right here, Burning Breath, lets you search your deck for a fire energy and attach it to this Pokemon. Pretty standard energy acceleration for small and some damage. And then 3 for 120 and burn. Not exactly exciting for sure, but it does let you use Houndoom for an attack for energy acceleration. Which is nice. Uh, we'll have to see what the VMAX does when we get around to it. Alright, we're scrolling along. 
Okay, so we come to actually this card right here, which... This Entei right here, the Single Strike Entei. Now, this right here is actually a bit reminiscent of the Primeape Single Strike Pokemon that came out a set prior. Or the current set, rather, I should say. Battle Styles. But it's actually 10 damage, or it's actually 10 damage for each damage counter on your bench Single Strike Pokemon. This does mean that in order to really use this card to its full potential, you would have to have all Single Strike Pokemon to really make it work. Actually, scratch that. You don't have to. You can just have damage counters in general. So yeah, you can still utilize Jinx to move damage counters around if need be. And of course, you know, it uses Houndoom as well. It sticks to that same Single Strike engine. So this could be a pretty decent card, I think. Pretty decent. And in general, I think you could even set up maybe better than Primate can in the first place. That's yet to be proven, but there's potential here. There's definitely potential. All right, then we'll go down to Vaporeon, where Vaporeon's VMAX is also on the other page. So with this Vaporeon, it has the Rapid Strike rule text around it. So, yep, you can use Rapid Strike Energy. Triple draw is just a simple draw three cards. And then, of course, a splash jump is just 90 damage, then you uh, switch this Pokemon. So it's a hit and switch sort of thing going on here. You could maybe use it with some walls, but there's, like, better attackers in this case for this sort of scenario. But maybe the VMAX will actually be better. We'll have to come back around to that and see what it does. All right, we'll keep scrolling along, waiting for something to stick out. We have a Swampert with an ability. So let's see what Swampert does. Swampert has the ability Mudmaker, where once per turn, you may attach a water or fighting energy from your hand to your Pokemon. So, okay, it's a fair energy acceleration. It does kind of like suck that it is a stage two, but hey, energy acceleration is nice. Maybe you'll find its spot, maybe it won't. It'll kind of depend with this card, in my opinion, and where the meta goes. All right. Then we run over to a Melodic, which, believe it or not, a friend told me about this card and the ability that says whenever your opponent plays a supporter card from their hand, prevent all effects of that card done to you or your hand. So having this in play means you can't have a Marnie affect you. You can't have a Marnie affect you. Basically just Marnie is what I can see this for. Probably not worth the bench space, but it's kind of funny. I'll admit that. All right, we'll scroll over down here to uh, Glaceon V over here, which uh, is actually pretty neat. It has a nice little attack, Ice Ascension, right here that lets you uh, basically just evolve it right away to Glaceon V Max right off the bat, which means, you know, going second won't be such a bad thing if it does happen. Obviously, you still want to go first, but that's still fine, though. You can still get it evolved either way. And then we head over to the VMAX itself. And it actually has some pretty solid stuff going for it right here. It's got that Crystal Veil ability that prevents it from being hit by any of your opponent's VMAX Pokemon, excluding any Glaceon VMAX, of course, which, you know, thankfully they put that in there to sort of create or not really as much create, sort of break apart any sort of just stalemates in that situation. And then of course the attack Max Icicle has 150 damage and then 30 to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon, which that's actually pretty decent. It's not bad and it actually prevents a fair amount of the meta, which we are shifting a lot towards that VMAX sort of meta. The only problem of course, which is of course the elephant in the room is of the metal weakness that it has, which you know, Metal Weakness is bad right now. Zacian's still a popular card. It's going to be a popular card for a very long time. No questions asked. All right. We'll uh, keep going down. Head over to Jolteon V, which, again, the VMAX is on its own separate page. I don't know why. Where, okay, you get, for a colorless energy, you get 20 damage to anything. A lightning in two colors does 60 damage for each heads you get on your coin flips. Not very good, not very playable. Maybe the VMAX will be better. Alright, let me scroll down. 
where we've got SP on V. Again, the VMAX is on its own separate page right here, where this does 60 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon V, which, depending on the situation, it could actually be okay as maybe as like a finishing attack. But underwhelming in the least because of its main attack, Extra Sentry, it just does 120 damage, vanilla. So, a okay to mediocre card. Maybe the VMAX will be better. We'll just have to see. All right, and then we've got here Florigis, uh Rapid Strike Stage 2 that uh, lets you as many times as you'd like during your turn. You may move an energy from one of your Pokemon to another one of your Rapid Strike Pokemon. So that's actually pretty neat. Ra Rapid Strike Energy Movement. So yeah, and it says any energy in general. So Rapid Strike Energies do count for that. It is a stage two, that is the sad part, so it's going to be kind of hard to find where this actually fits. You could maybe be cute, run it in, say, like Rapid Strike Urshifu, for example, to, you know, move energy around, Cheryl frequently, stuff like that. So it's it's cute in a way, but eh, I think it's just better off without it. All right, I'm going to scroll down here to Sylveon V and VMAX which Sylveon V has an ability that lets you search for an item card and put it in your hand. But if you do use the ability, your turn does end right away, which that doesn't really seem that great on its own. But, you know, going first, it could be very helpful to get you something that you could possibly use. It's cute to say the very least. Not too busted. But, hey, grab a piece of your setup right away. Pop off the next turn. Then we head over to the VMAX, which, again, carries the Rapid Strike rules text from that. Has an attack right here for a Psychic Energy. lets you attach an energy from your hand to one of your bench Pokemon, and then heal 120 damage from it. But then it's got an attack, um, Max Harmony, that does 70 damage, and then another 30 for each type of Pokemon on your bench. So, very reminiscent of the Xerneas that came from the X and Y area that had that Rainbow Force attack. It did the same exact thing. And besides being able to utilize uh, Triple Acceleration Energy and even Rapid Strike Energy to get the attack off faster, the big problem is, is that there's not much of a way to sort of get those different types going in an efficient way like it was for the Xerneas deck from back then. You could maybe carry this over to Expanded and play it there where you have cards like Skyfield, you have all the dual-type Pokemon so on and so forth it might be able to do good there but you know other than that like unless someone actually rectifies it in standard i don't exactly see it being more of a standard thing more than i do an expanded thing it's okay all right sure all right we head over to probably one of the more talked about uh v maxes of this set which is uh, umbreon v max which uh, Umbreon V in itself, and uh, these carry over the single strike mechanics. Mean look, 30 damage, they can't retreat next turn. 80 damage, if this Pokemon has any damage counter on it, so 80 more damage, so 160. Which is okay. But to be honest, you won't really be attacking with this because of this card right here, Umbreon V Max. 3 for 160 isn't great. But it has an awesome ability, which is very reminiscent of Lycanroc GX, Ninetales, and Luxray Level X from back in the day. Where, straight up, you evolve this Pokemon. It's a boss's orders effect. It's a gust, whatever you want to call it. Evolve it, bring up one of their Pokemon of your choice. Now, this card's already been talked about in the sense that it's going to probably see play in Eternatus. So Eternatus, yep, once again, has another thing going for it. Or it has a built-in boss effect. For... And another one of those reasons why Eternatus is still going to probably remain a really high popularity deck, even with cards you know, like Avery coming out, even with you know Urshifu decks still running around. Just got to admit, can't get rid of Eternatus that easily. Alright, we'll scroll down to this Zorark right here, which I was checking this out yesterday. 
And uh, this has a neat little ability that lets you search your discard pile for a stage one evolution card, except for Zoroark. Discard this Pokemon and all cards attached to it, then put the new Pokemon in that one's position, which it's cool, but it's redundant. So I don't really see this scene any play. It's just neat. Is Zorark doing actually Zorark things? Like, for real? Alright, and then... Let's see if I missed anything. So we've got some trainers right here. We'll start with the most talked about one, which is Vigor Shake, that lets you uh, use this card, your turn ends, you search your deck for a card that evolves from one of your Pokemon, and evolve it right away. And yes, you can do it even when it was put in the field right away. People are already talking about this card in the sense that uh, it's more than likely to get banned and expanded. At least we hope so because of crazy effects that can pop off. Which, you know, we would hope so. I mean, I mean, even in standard, it has the potential of maybe doing something crazy. But, you know, time will tell. We'll see what happens and how people utilize it. Then we'll head over to Dream Ball. That, uh... You can only play it if you took it as a face-down prize card and before you put it in your hand. And what it does, it lets you search your deck for a Pokemon and put it on your bench. Any Pokemon. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Which, again, it, pro it plays off that whole, you know, grabbing from the prize mechanic, of course. But, unfortunately, you know, there's better search cards. And if, if you really need to use this to set up, believe me, you're... How'd you even take prize cards in the first place? I, I doubt this is going to see play. Then we go on over here to Elemental Badge that works for Vaporeon, Jolteon, and Flareon V. Which, yes, it will work for the VMAX. And it lets you pay one colorless less to use any of its attacks. We'll actually have to see what the VMAXs do before I can make a judgment on this. But I think it's actually cool that they're doing something to support those. You'll also notice that they um, did something for each of them. So we'll see how that goes. The Snow Leaf Badge works for Glaceon and Leafeon, which uh, gets rid of uh, Retreat Cost and Weakness. Which, that's actually pretty amazing. Which, going back to Glaceon from earlier, if you want to like erase that Metal Weakness that I noticed that Zacian takes advantage of all the time, then yeah, you can probably run this. I mean, obviously, you know, Telescopic Sight would have been my choice in general, but hey, if you're worried about Zacian, throw this card in there. It could work. We'll go down here to the Moon and Sun badge that works for Espeon and Umbreon V. That uh, states that whenever your opponent plays a supporter of card from their hand, you prevent all effects of that card done to it. So, in general, just boss stuff like that. I I don't think this will see play. This definitely will not see play. And then we've got Ribbon badge that uh, goes on to Sylveon V. That uh, states that whenever it's knocked out, your opponent takes one less prize card. So, hey, if you want to make, you know, a two-prize game out of your Sylveon VMAX deck, then, hey, that's the card for you. We'll go down over here to Aroma Lady. That just states to draw two cards, and you recover all special, addition, blah, blah, all special conditions on your active Pokemon. There's better cards. Don't play this. We'll go over to Gordy that lets you look at the top seven cards of your deck. Choose as many energy as you find from there, reveal them, put them in your hand. So hey, lets you farm some energies. Very reminiscent of, I believe it was interviewer's questions, but for one card less. It's cool, not the best, but there's potential behind it. All right, we'll go down there to Fashion Mall, which lets you, uh, during each player's turn, they may choose a tool card attached to one of your Pokemon in play, bounce it back to their hand. So, a cheeky way to get rid of um, tools attached to Pokemon. I say just use Tool Scrapper in this situation. I don't, like, I, I, there's better stadiums you can play. There's definitely better stadiums, but it could be okay. Alright. Then, we come down here to Treasure Energy. That uh, states that if you took this as a face-down prize card, you may attach this to one of your Pokemon. So, again, one of those cards that just plays off the prize cards in a way. But I still think it's not worth it, though. Because it only provides colorless, even if you do get it out of your prize cards. I, I don't really see this uh, coming into play. Okay. 
Now we'll head over to the cards that got cut out from this list right here, which there should be only yep, Flareon, Jolteon, Espeon, and Vaporeon. We'll start with Flareon, that for a fire and two colorless lets you do 100 damage for uh, discarding the top five cards of your deck, and then there's 100 times the amount of energy you discard this way. So, yeah, this has the potential of knocking out a lot of stuff right here. Welder's still a legal card, so you can still energy accelerate with that. Worst case scenario, you're energy accelerating with Houndoom for the post rotation. But it is neat in that sense that, yeah, mill cards and then hit energies. You could possibly build around this, even though I think there's still better decks you could be playing, but it might be worth a shot. Alright, then we'll head over to Vaporeon that does for a colorless. Choosing a water Pokemon from your discard pile and putting it on your bench and then attaching three energies from your discard pile to that Pokemon. So you could potentially create some crazy plays with it, that attack by itself. But does the other attack justify even playing it in the first place? Let's see. It's 100 damage, but then if the defending Pokemon already has any damage counters in it, then it does 100 more damage, which... That's not exactly one-shotting anything, of course. So, I mean, I think, you know, aside from... The first attack, I don't really see too much going on with this. Again, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. We already talked about Glaceon. So then we've got Jolteon VMAX. That, uh, for, uh, this is a very simple one for just a Lightning and a Colorless. 100 damage, and then it does 100 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon that already has any damage counters on it. It's cute, it's nice, but... I don't think it does enough. But that could change. And like I said, you know, Urshifu is still a very popular deck. And even just Urshifu's one energy attack can still knock this out in the first place. So I don't think this is going to see really any play, to be honest with you. But yeah, then we get over to... Let me just make sure... Yep, this is the final card we're talking about, Espeon VMAX, that has the ability Sun Notification, that uh, as long as this Pokemon's in play, each of your Pokemon that has any energy attached to it isn't affected by effects from the attacks of your opponent's Pokemon. So, yeah, it can actually get around a few things, in a way. Which, that's a nice ability, but does the attack justify using it? Let's take a look. So it does 60 damage times uh, the number of energy attached to your opponent's Pokemon. So, another one of those things that just... they You swing with this, and it works depending on what they've got as far as energy goes. Uh, That's okay. I don't think it's going to be, like, game-breaking at all. Just average, in my opinion. And then, of course, all this stuff we already went over. But, yeah, that's my full look into the... Uh, EV Hero set, and like I said before, we don't know where this is going to fall into place, whether it's going to be in the Evolving Skies set, whether it's going to be in its own little set. We don't know where it's going to be. We just know that one day we will be getting these cards. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to uh, subscribe, leave a like on it, and uh, comment what you think you like from this set in general. If you would like to see more Pokemon-related content from me, I do stream on Twitch regularly every day except for Wednesday from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where we do plenty of ladder playing. We're doing viewer battles. I do giveaways every day. And we're also going to be starting up weekly tournaments as well in the future. Stay tuned for that and hopefully you can stop by for those. But that's all I got for you today. Hope you have a nice day and take care.